I'm at the antique barn. Just outside of Allen. And I'm gonna be walking through the store just like I did at Hog Creek. And we'll see what I see. These have been sitting here a while. From the looks of it, they're gonna stay here too. That one's a stacked leather handle. It's kind of a unique thing. Looks like somebody redid it though. That's not an original. There's one that doesn't have the coil in it. Twenty bucks. That yeah, looks like fun. If I was a kid, I'd be on it. Next we go inside and I have to use voiceover because we can't have any of that music get into the video. Scout Crafter had a little lantern similar to this one. His was older. Didn't have the glass covering the light bulb. His also cost a lot less than this one. This is a number four. Uh, it's a Defiance uh, Stanley knockoff brand. And it's a nice little plane. I actually have one very similar to that. This is just nuts. Lots of stuff to look at. Now these little grindstones, these are industrial grindstones. They're not for a treadle grinder, even though they look like a treadle grinder stone. They're not. They're from a large industrial grinding jack. Uh, they had to have them that large in order to last long enough to do what they wanted to do. When the diameter gets down, they stopped using them. Toolboxes. I always take a picture of them. I don't necessarily buy them. called an enlarger. Before the digital, days before digital, that, that was quite have. the thing to have. Making large photos. Now, you just now we just push a button up. and enlarge the photo on the camera itself. I do like this little spot welder. It's a spot weld gun, 10 bucks. I think that you plug into a welder and it, it allows the welder to make spot welds. Uh, not enough to buy it because I don't think it works for one thing and for the other it's going to require a whole lot of setup and I don't do spot plots. But it is a cool old piece of equipment. Hmm. I also like that 
multimeter. Interesting, but I don't need one. Just walking down the aisles and looking at various things, and this catches my eye. So, that's another one. We'll pick it up. $3.16. Rusty 9-inch pipe wrench, $3.16. I wonder. Now this corner booth always has weird stuff in it. This little corner booth always has weird stuff. Like and like this, this grinder. Grinder? The wheel is held on to the spindle with a nailed through a hole drilled in the end of the spindle. Never seen one like that before. Hmm. No apparent use for it. And an oscilloscope. It's kind of a cool thing. And I doubt it even runs anymore, but it's an interesting antique. Some old planes. Must be what he scrapes out the bottom of buckets. Just random stuff and toolboxes thrown in there. And just tosses in there. If it was a garage sale, that'd be the free box. I have to walk sideways to get through. The cube the, is just packed full of stuff. I have to walk sideways to get through. Putter cutter. This is the putter cutter. I don't know what that means. I don't know what it is. It, it's a paper cutter from the looks of it, but I don't know why. And this little thing, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking it looks a lot like uh, something that you would put on an auger bit to tool. Use as a depth stop. $7. Looks like a thing to set the depth on an auger bit. This is a piece of photographic equipment, but I can't tell you what it is. I have no idea. Oil cans. Just all kinds of stuff. He packs this book just full of things. Here I come back and look at the price tag on this motor. And Okay, if you collect antique motors, but I don't think it works. Now I just trot down the aisle away because there's not really a whole lot here to see. Uh, there's a box of tools. It's not anything I would want. It's bits and pieces of stuff that I already have. Chalk line.
tape dispensers. That's a nice brace bit. Well, brace. The bit goes into the brace. Sorry about the jerky movement. Evidently my hand was shaking. And these are sinker molds. Interesting idea. Not anything I needed. We made sinkers when we were a kid. We just took a quarter inch drill or a half inch drill depending on what size sinker we wanted and we drilled a hole in a piece of wood and twisted up a piece of copper wire and stuck it in there and poured so uh, lead down into the hole. These are more sinker molds. I thought at first that they were bullet molds which are more interesting not anywhere near as useful because I don't have a need for them. Sinkers at least you can say okay I made sinkers and I'm going to go fishing. But bullet molds for a gun that I don't own and that'd be kind of something. It's always kind of nice coming to the antique barn. They have cool stuff. Some of the stuff is priced a little bit high, but not as much as most places. Now that axe looks interesting, except the handle split completely all the way up to the grip. Lots of toys, no tools. But people like toys too. with somebody borrowing their hammer. Yankee screwdriver. The big one. A little too much to carry in your tool pouch. That'd be something if you drove a lot of screws in the, in the early 1950s. You'd want one of those. On up to the 60s, actually. That's a collectible thing. I sometimes think collectibles are, are more popular if they're a certain size. You know, you can pack a lot of them into a small area, especially if they're brass and they look nice. Plum Bob's fit that description pretty well. Lots of gasoline torches, lots of blow torches. gas cans I hate. Safety can. There's 
just made it so that they spilled all over the place and they were hard to pick up and hard to carry and hard to use. Now, I know I'm kind of walking through here fairly quickly, but you can always stop the video. Uh, I quite often do that watching other people's videos. I stop it, I go back, I blow it up, I expand the picture, because I want to see something in particular. And I try and hold it steady enough so that the, the tags and things can be legible. Now, obviously, three feet away, you're not going to be able to read the tag. But I'm not going to go through every item in every antique shop. Now this, this is very similar to what Scout Crafter had. See, it's got the open bulbs. But the lights are all on the bottom. It makes sense that they're protected down there. And it was a lot more than the one John had. I like the one John had. The other thing is, this one, they left the batteries in. You can see the rusted through spot on the top. I bet the acid in the battery got to it. Made a hole right through it. I didn't open it up and look because I wasn't going to buy it anyways. But I bet the interior is pretty well trashed with the acid, at least in that one spot. If you're buying flashlights or anything that's got batteries in it, you want to open it up and look and make sure that it's not corroded to the point where it's useless. I bought a really nice little Boy Scout flashlight. Didn't even think about it. Opened it up when I got home. And the insides were just rotted away. Just nothing left of them. especially nice. It's only eight bucks. That's a sausage grinder. You don't want to know what goes through there. The thing that turns you off sausage is watching it being made. is giving me a warning that it is running out of memory. So this trip to the antique barn is going to have to be over. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos in the channel, just drop it out in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching. This video is not to be viewed by anyone under the age of 13 in the U.S. or 16 in the European Union without the express written permission of the parents or legal guardians of the underage person.
Such written permission must be on file at the local government entity in charge of enforcing the rules and regulations established by the FTC. Anyone violating these terms is admitting by default that they hold harmless the owners and operators of this channel. Any and all questions should be addressed to your local branch of the FTC.